Earlier today, I was at Notre Dame High School, and I asked them my favorite question of all, if the Catholic Church was a sports team and had a mascot, who would this mascot be? Especially as we enter into the season of Lent, it's important to realize, what are we about? Who is our mascot? And so I gave them three options, and I'm sure some of you haven't heard this before, so you could think in your minds which one you would choose. So I told them option one, a lion, king of the jungle, for his strength and ability to protect others from getting into trouble. It's a good one, right? Jesus was a lion from the tribe of Judah, and Aslan is awesome. Option two, an eagle, king of the sky, for his ability to get above all of the chaos, right, and be safe from all dangers of this world. And if you've watched Lord of the Rings, the eagles are coming, great symbol of God. He was called an eagle in the Old Testament to save chosen Israel from corruption. And option three, a unicorn. That's what my nieces love, unicorns. And believe it or not, unicorns are in the Bible, and Jesus has actually been a symbol of Jesus from the second century is a unicorn. And unicorns are magical, and they always get to heaven, right? So could it be a unicorn? And so I gave them these three options, a lion, an eagle, and a unicorn. Which one do you think they chose? They chose the unicorn. This is a unicorn, by the way, a squishmallow unicorn. They chose the unicorn. 80% of the students chose the unicorn. Maybe it's because they were just trying to be funny, but maybe it's because we all know unicorns are taking over the world right now. If you've checked out Instagram, over 7 million unicorn hashtags, it's everywhere. Unicorns are really taking over the world. And unicorns were this once fierce creature that was only found in the furthest corners of the known world. But now it's a sparkly, rainbow, magical friend that everyone loves. You go to Starbucks, you have your unicorn frappuccino. My nieces watch My Little Pony all the time and they prance around in their unicorn onesies. Everyone loves unicorns today. And it got me thinking, because I wasn't going to preach about this at all, but I've been thinking so much about unicorns over the past six hours. Wouldn't it be nice if the unicorn was our mascot for the Catholic Church? Wouldn't it be nice if instead of Ash Wednesday, this was Easter Sunday? Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, wouldn't it be nice if there was no such thing as Lent and every day could just be a party? Wouldn't it be nice if I could be the patron saint of Hawaii and take a vacation right now and play some golf? Wouldn't it be nice if instead of Jesus calling us for prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, Jesus just said, do whatever you want. Everything's going to be okay. Wouldn't it be nice if the unicorn was the real mascot of the Catholic Church and you had total freedom you're special. You're one of a kind. Do whatever you want in this life. All's going to be okay. Heaven's waiting for you where you ride a unicorn for eternity. Wouldn't it be nice? Does anyone feel like that? Wouldn't it be nice? I do sometimes. I have the wouldn't it be nice syndrome. I was driving from Notre Dame, watched this guy eating, look like a burger, and I'm like, wouldn't it be nice if I could just eat a burger right now? Wouldn't it be nice? But as some of you might remember, the unicorn is not the mascot of the Catholic Church. Does anyone know what it is? It's the salmon. He's back. He's back for Lent. And today, the church gives us this Lenten season as a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. We're not called to live in the fantasy world. I like unicorns for my nieces, but today's a reality check. It really is. It's meant to be a wake-up call. 
that there actually is a real war going on for each one of our lives. Life is not a magical fa fantasy world. There's a real battle going on for the eternal salvation of my soul and of your soul. There's a real war going on for our lives. And the salmon is a symbol of the life that Jesus is calling each one of us to engage in today. So Lent is a gift. It's a gift from God who loves me way more than I love myself. And God loves you way more than you love yourself. And so though it would be, wouldn't it be nice if God could just say, every day is Easter Sunday, go eat a chocolate bunny, drink a unicorn frappuccino. Wouldn't it be nice? No, God's a loving father. And when there's real danger in the world, He's got to warn us. He's got to tell us that there is real danger here. There's an enemy, Satan. He's real. He's out to ruin your life. And he's out to ruin my life as well. He's a real spiritual evil that wants to destroy your life. And he wants you to live in a fantasy world. He wants you to believe that it doesn't really matter what you do. You just go live your life, be happy, do whatever you want. You're one of a kind, you're special. And everyone will go to heaven, right? Because everyone's a nice person. That is not life, that is a fantasy. And God is trying to wake us up to live in reality today. And so the salmon, this is real life. I'm gonna remind you of the life of a salmon. Salmon, when they become adults, they take an amazing, epic journey. They swim 700 miles, 9,000 feet in elevation, some of them. They navigate roaring rapids, vicious currents, hungry bears, fishermen, all for one purpose, because they're made to get home, so that when they die, they're gonna produce abundant life for the next generation because they know they're gonna die. And there's something inside of them that wants to be able to produce life so that when they die, there's a great story that will be told. Generations will be passed on the life that they gave. That's what Jesus came to do. He entered into this world. This is enemy occupied territory. And Jesus swam upstream. He navigated all of the threats this world could throw at him. And when he died, he produced abundant life. Jesus did not come into this world as a unicorn and just prance around and say, all is well. Be nice to each other. No. No, he loves us way more than that. He's calling us all to wake up. That every single person here is going to die someday. And the eternal destiny of our souls is at stake. We can truly get taken out. I can get taken out by the enemy. You can as well. And so God loves us so much that he gives us this season of Lent to wake us up and to say, are you satisfied with your life? Are you really happy right now? Is, is your life full of abundant joy and peace and happiness? Can you really say that? Can you really say that you are experiencing the fullness of life right now? Be honest with yourself. Ask yourself this question right now. Am I experiencing the fullness of life? When you look at a saint, when you read the life of a saint, that's what the fullness of life looks like. Am I experiencing that right now? I would say no for myself. And so I say, thanks be to God I have this season of Lent because I want more life. I want the life that Jesus promises me. And so for every single person here, you have the choice. Are you going to stay living in a fantasy world? 
and just believe that you get to do whatever you want with your life because all is going to be okay. All is going to be sparkles and rainbows. Or are you going to live in the real world? Are you going to live in the real world? Are you going to take up this holy season of Lent and fight against the spiritual evils? Actually do battle? Live a life of great sacrificial love? Really live a life of prayer? Today is the choice. In a few moments when I say, repent and believe in the gospel, I really ask you to pray for the grace that all of the things that I've said about the spiritual battles, about the battle between living in the fantasy world that Satan's trying to draw all of us into and the real world that Jesus is inviting us to live into, Pray for that grace that this will not just be words that I say to you, but something that will really impact your life, that will want to wake you up in the morning, to say, my life has great meaning and purpose. And time is ticking. And one day, I'm going to die. And what am I going to have to show for it? What am I going to have to show for it? It's your choice. Jesus is inviting you. And for some of you, he's begging you to wake up, to realize the awesome gift that this life is, and to start swimming upstream. That's what you're made for. That's the life that Jesus shows us. That's the life that you're made for. So that one day, when you die, you will see abundant life produced for the next generation. So I ask you, I beg you, I invite you, on behalf of Christ, as his ambassador, repent. Take up this holy season of Lent.